So what another incredible day of intraday volatility taking off from where Monday closed. Today on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we saw a wild 670 point swing throughout the trading session on Tuesday. We opened up here just short of 17,700. We sold off below that technical trigger, 17,543. We got as low as 17,475 or even slightly lower. But then we saw another 330 point rally to the upside, leaving us with a white long day candlestick. So it looks like we do have a lower wick, but the body itself is white and it has engulfed both Monday and also Thursday's trading candles. What is this candlestick telling us? At the close on Tuesday, we really wanted to see, first of all, a legitimate close below 17,543. Although we saw a slight push below that, we couldn't hold and immediately we saw the buyers jump back into the market. The same on the S&P 500. We've been speaking about these critical levels for quite some time now. We flinched below it intraday once again, below 2,050. We couldn't hold it. And we saw that immediate snap back to the upside. All three markets, even the NASDAQ, have left us with what we call some form of a hammer type of candlestick. It really suggests with that long lower wick that people are willing to buy this market at this location and to not let it sell off and break below these three critical areas, which I've made very, very clear on this YouTube channel. These three candlesticks, which have set up on the Dow Jones, the S&P and the NASDAQ, as at the close on Tuesday, are leading for us to believe that the markets are going to hold this support level and we are going to see maybe just a quiet or, or maybe a one or two day push higher or maybe even move back up to 18,075 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the next three trading sessions. What is very interesting to note, however, is that a lot of trades have actually triggered and they were really, really profitable as at the close on Tuesday. A little bit more on that uh, in a couple of minutes. But right now, just to surmise these markets, look, we tried to push below those critical levels. We didn't hold, we didn't get the close, and we didn't get the follow through. But having said that, we are seeing a little bit of buying pressure on the three markets, which leads us to believe that at support, once again, we are going to hold for the ninth or 10th time at this support level since March 2015. A little bit more on that as the week advances, but these candlesticks, I must make very clear, are somewhat bullish given those long lower wicks. Now, moving into the individual trade analysis, or at least some of the recaps, Baidu has been an absolutely phenomenal trade. I mean, here we were last week with a 204 bearish entry. We got into this trade on Monday last week, we sold off very, very quickly. We hit our first target at $190.59 as at Monday. We even got triggered in at 187.60 again today out at 183.90. Two very profitable trades on this Baidu stock, which we saw coming since this rollover of this descending triangle. If I zoom out on the weekly and just show you what we're looking at. So an absolutely phenomenal trade. You've done incredibly well. I just wanted to say congratulations on this trade. It has been really a testing period for technical swing traders around the world. This is really a great trade setup and you've seen and capitalized on the actual price movement. This leads me into the Caterpillar trade setup because this is a very similar type of trade also. Here we were, original entry $84.61. We were triggered into this, I believe, on Wednesday last week. Yes, we were. We saw the continuation take place on Monday, being yesterday, a re-entry at 83.47, and today we hit our first target at $81.93. I took a couple of positions off the table. I'm still holding the majority of my Caterpillar shorts, but again, it's really great to bank some profit after the type of trading activity we have seen over the past weeks and months. So really nice trade setup here. I'm still expecting this ultimately to oscillate all the way back down to $77.83 if we get there before earnings. Obviously, this is contingent on what happens post Tuesday's candle, how we finish the trading session on Tuesday, because this has got me somewhat cautiously uh, bearish given the type of candlestick which is set up and of course the location where it is setting up at macro support. 670 point move in intraday it doesn't happen all that much. When it does, I find it interesting because it's happening at a very critical area on the technical chart. You can see also we're sitting right on that 200 simple moving average. So it's really showing up at macro uh, support and it really looks as though it's going to hold these markets higher. We'll see how the week unfolds, but outside of that, CVX is starting to break down 94.69. Yes, we are breaking support, so I'm interested to see how that works out on CVX. Google is still sideways within 
this absolute funky type of channel which we've seen since really April 2015. Goldman Sachs has pulled back. IBM has also seen a little pullback retest down to 162.59. Our original entry, it's left us with what we call another hammer type of candlestick. If you're in this trade still, just keep your stop where it is and we'll follow this trade as it progresses throughout Wednesday's trading session. Netflix is still holding up relatively well. We've gone over in great detail what this pattern suggests. We haven't seen the sentiment flow through into uh, this individual stock Netflix, but you can see the bearish types of candlesticks once again sending up over the past four trading sessions. This looks like some form of a holding pattern until we see that breakdown. We'll follow that in close detail. Tesla had a big pullback today. If you're fortunate enough and you took my caution or my words over the weekend, you may have exited first thing Monday. If it opened in flat, flat, pardon me, or neutral, or if we pushed up above to really retest this 283.88 level, you should have taken positions off. Today, we've seen a pullback. It's not really a reversal. It's more so just a retest of this area. So if you are still holding Tesla, that's all right. It is still profitable, but you have to understand that it's probably going to move sideways here for a couple of weeks until we start really reclaiming that long-term bullish trend, which we've established since breaking out in April 2015. Once we break out of this descending long-term triangle, which is set up not only on Tesla, but also on Amazon, you can see that similar type of trade uh, pattern and structure set up. And we go through these resting phases like we've done in Amazon. Amazon was one of those trades a couple of weeks ago where we were really excited about the bullish break at 441.90, but we didn't see the follow through and the commitment up to 452.09. Instead, again, much like the markets themselves, it has left us with another hammer type of candle and we're just completely neutral on that Amazon type of trade. Outside of that, Boeing Airlines made that break above 141.84. I didn't take the trade on this particular stock. Although the candlestick today suggests that it's really got some nice momentum off from support and it looks as though we're going to come back up and retest 146 over the coming days. I think that's a pretty decent uh, individual trade recap there. All of the trades and individual stocks which I wanted to recap, very important that you understand what the market's doing. Again, incredibly volatile. Uh, just witnessed today by that 670 point intraday swing on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It really comes on the back of any form of rumor so to speak, on, a, on a, an acceptance of austerity measures just as easily as there are rumors saying that there is some form of a deal. It's just as easy to see those rumors quickly dispelled and for reality to strike back in and to say, look, there is no deal. No deal has been reached. And then you'll see once again, volatility and some form of a sell-off uh, probably over the next one to two days if this information or this news or some form of uh, rumor comes out once again saying that, look, there hasn't been a deal reached. So again, this market is very, very uh, importantly headline driven, a lot going on overseas in Europe. And uh, unfortunately, the US markets appear as though they're really just moving in sync with any of these discussions or any of these advancements moving out of Europe. I'll leave it at that for the Tuesday afternoon market recap. Obviously, I didn't provide you one with Monday because we didn't see any structural damage. We didn't see any movement below this trigger. Today, again, just to recap, we saw an intraday flinch below this level, but we didn't get that close and then the follow through. So I'm still paying attention to this level. It still has a lot of significance, a lot of importance. But until we get that close and a legitimate break below it, we're really, really at that at that point on the chart where we're, we are at macro support and un unless we break below it, our perspective right now and especially after today's candle really suggests that we may see a push higher in the equity market. So I'll keep you up to date. However, stay safe, traders and friends right around the world. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. All the best. Goodbye.